Welcome to Service Georgina on Rogers TV. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk. Our goal is to bring you information to help you understand more about the many services and departments of the town of Georgina. Today's show will focus on the town's winter maintenance program and road construction. And joining me to, to talk about both of those is Rob Flindel, Director of Operations and Infrastructure, Michael Voss, Manager of Roads Operations and Fleet in the Operations and Infrastructure Department. So welcome to you both. In the, Thank you, Derek. Yeah, in the, uh, winter, in the winter season, the biggest concern residents have is safe travel on our roads and sidewalks across the town. And the town oversees 333 kilometers of roads, 140 kilometers of sidewalks, and 25 municipal parking lots. Rob, maybe you can give us a, an overview. I know uh, Michael gets into the, the details, but snow removal is a big process, and it's one that many residents have questions about. And can you break it down for us, starting with the, the standards and, and the level of service? Certainly. Thank you, Mayor Quirk. So yes, uh, winter maintenance operations uh, is one of our biggest activities through the year. It's basically half of, of our year. And as you mentioned, uh, it's very important to the, the residents of the, the community and also any visitors uh, to town. So, so we take it very, very uh, seriously. And it's, it's a big part of our day-to-day -day activity. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this uh, uh, little segment, we're going to run through some of the the programs that uh, are, are maybe modified or changing, uh, uh, the residents may have noticed. And all of the detail of that, I'm going to pass over uh, to my colleague, Mike Voss, who's the manager of operations and, and fleet. But basically, uh, in the past uh, two years, we've made improvements to our program and we've changed a few things that residents will, will start to see and will help explain some of the activities that uh, you know haven't changed but do affect the residents as we go forward. Great. So, Michael, can you tell us what the standards are for uh, snow removal and and the, the level of service that the town has? Absolutely, uh, uh, Mayor Mark Burke. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, the town's required to meet regulations for winter maintenance as set out by the province. Um, these are generally called the minimum maintenance standards, which they define the treatment uh, timelines for different types of roads. We're fortunate and proud to offer winter maintenance services well above the uh, the minimum required. Um, so in general, we expect all roads to receive about one treatment of plowing and sanding or salting within 16 hours after an event, and this includes local roads. Good. So the um, the current resources that we have for snow removal, maybe mm -hmm. outline why we use contractors for, for some of that service delivery. Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, we deliver winter maintenance with a combination of, of both contractors and in-house delivery. Um, there's, there's two main reasons. Um, one, it allows us uh, an opportunity to deliver services kind of throughout the week without any limitations. Um, so we can we can service the roads no matter when the when the weather uh, when, when the weather comes to the, to, to the town, um, as well as it provides us a, a redundancy by having different outlets of service delivery. So in the event there's uh, uh, an issue with in-house delivery or contracted delivery, we have the opportunity to uh, to move resources around to deliver um, with one or the other or a combination of. of both. Right. So this is Mike, can you just uh, mention as well, uh, the, through the winter, uh, we do change our shift operations and that right. uh, plays into uh, uh, the split between contracted staff uh, and staff utilization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was uh, just going to say too, we don't maybe need, in the winter, we need more trucks to be able to get out to all those routes and we don't need all of those trucks year round. That's part of the, the reason, is it not? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for mentioning that. So, so we, um, our our equipment utilization is, uh, um, I guess, not needed at, at the full capacity of the amount of equipment we need in the winter months. We we need basically two to two and a half times the amount of equipment in just the winter months as we would ever need in the summer months. So that definitely plays into uh, um, why we would hire contractors for very you know peak seasons uh, um, of uh, of maintenance throughout the town, specific to winter. So this, this kind of, of breakdown applies to both sidewalks and roads. Uh, it's about a 40% contract, 60% in-house delivery. And what equipment do we have on the trucks? Obviously, I know we have snow plows, but what mm -hmm. other equipment do we have both outside of the truck? And what do we have in the cab that helps the, uh, the operators as well? Yeah, so a variety of equipment. So if we, if we talk about the, uh, the winter maintenance specific equipment, we have one-way and two-way plows. Um, we have electronic spreaders and spreader controllers to monitor material applications. Uh, in the town of Georgina, we're fortunate enough to have uh, belly plows. So these are plows that are underneath the body of the truck. Um, they assist with some of the, the rural road maintenance where we need additional down pressure uh, uh, to, to, to uh, maintain the roads. 
And some other the safety features, we have um, AVL, GPS tracking, so we know where operators are. Uh, of course, typical communications equipment with both radios and cell phone, uh, as well as uh, cameras. We have cameras that face both forward to, to the side and to the rear of the truck to assist the operators, because we do have quite, quite a few narrow roads within the town. And it's usually one, one operator per, uh, per truck? That's correct. Years ago, it was, you know, you had your operator and your wingman and, and you'd have the other guy was his, his job was to operate the, the, um, the wing plow, was it not? That, that, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Wing, wing men or wing women uh, well, were a thing yep. of, the, of the past. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we have to be a bit more uh, fiscally responsible now. And, and there's and there's safety. Uh, like I mentioned, there's cameras and stuff that now can yep. take of those positions. Good. Now, Mike, uh, as well, sure. could you uh, just ex explain, sorry, sorry Mayor Quirk, to okay. uh, jump in. Could, could you explain just a little bit more about the automatic vehicle locating and how that works? Yeah, ab absolutely. So uh, every, um, our, our automatic vehicle locators are exception based. So so they they respond and, and put a ping on a, on a location um, every time there's a change of speed, change of direction, a uh, change of, of uh, any of the equipment. So there's, there's sensors on every piece of equipment in the truck, whether it's the spreader controller, the plows, the wing, the belly plow, they all have sensors associated with them. So we know exactly what our equipment's doing and where it's, where it's doing. Yeah. So if somebody calls in and they're concerned about uh, something not happening or something happening on, on their road, um, you can tell how fast the truck was going, if it was operating the plow, if the, the salter sander spreader was, was operating. That, that's really good information to, to have to be able to look back and uh, be able to, to know what was, uh, what was happening. Good Absolutely. It's, it's excellent for both uh, um, uh, after event information as well as you know, during, during an operation, we need to, need to know, you know what roads have been cleared, which ones haven't. Right. It, it's 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 not always the same process because you know as as you know weather will come from the east one day and come from the west the next so sometimes we have to make sure that that's monitored to uh, to understand which roads are, are remaining. Good. Now we've talked a little bit about uh, spreading uh, of material through this uh, discussion. Uh, salt and the impact to Lake Simcoe has become more and more of an issue. Uh, can you tell me what we've done to reduce our amount of salt? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, uh, in, in terms of our compliance, we have uh, two, two pieces that we kind of follow. Uh, one is our, our internal salt management plan, which uh, is, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of understanding cradle to grave uh, of, of how the salt comes into the town and where it's placed and monitoring that and reporting that. Um, the other program we, we adhere to is called Smart About Salt, and that's one that municipalities um, uh, uh, join join together and, and talk about salt use and how to monitor it best and how to use it and that type of thing. Uh, in terms of our our day to day or operational monitoring, our electronic spreader controller uh, controllers, as we mentioned before, they monitor through the automated vehicle locator, so we know exactly where the salt is being placed and at, and at one, what quantity. And we vary the the uh, application rates based upon the event, so it's not one standard uh, application rate for for the entirety of a storm or an event. Uh, we do monitor and we do use sand still as well but i think we're trying to reduce our our volume of sand because in the sand in the spring you've got to sweep all the streets and clean up that sand and there's concern of the sand getting into the the storm drains and into uh, the river courses and then ultimately to the lake so it's it's quite a science i um from what i little i understand of it, it it's not just uh, throw down some salt and throw down <laughs> some sand it's it's quite a a formula that we use depending on where we are in the in the whole process. No, no doubt the uh, material uh, specification and and the, and the application rates and everything is 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 crucial to you know how we manage a storm uh, and and also crucial to uh, our environment around us, right? So as you mentioned, uh, uh, the um, the creeks and tributaries and our stormwater system are all affected by both the salt and the sand application. So we have to make sure that we're monitoring that and, and, and placing the appropriate amount at the appropriate time in the appropriate place. Good. Now, I do get questions from people and I see things online, people wondering why their street isn't done by the time they leave for work in the morning. How are the routes prioritized and what monitoring is done to determine when the snow clearing should begin? So I'll, I'll start with uh, with your second question there, which is is how do we determine? So we have um, we have essentially a twenty four seven patrol happening on our roads, and we we monitor representative highways. 
Um, we also monitor the weather uh, on a very regular basis. Uh, we get reports four times a day formally, as well as we, you know, we monitor if there's a storm coming in. Uh, if if uh, an event is coming in, then we, we would deploy our, our snow plows from that patroller that, that we make the call out to a variety of different people. So our in-house resources, contractors, and that type of thing. The routes are, are generally delivered uh, through a priority sequence. So uh, they're done through uh, primary and secondary roads. So primary roads, generally speaking, uh, include those that have fire stations and schools and churches, uh, community uh, uh, gathering points, um, those types of things, transit routes. Uh, so those are cleared first, as well as collector roads throughout subdivisions. And then those are followed up by secondary roads and local roads. And certainly with the size of Georgina, you can be having quite a storm in, in Pefrala and nothing happening in Keswick, for example. So there's quite a difference. So the monitoring is, is crucial that it's not just somebody driving in one area, they, they monitor the entire town. Yep, so our representative highways is, a, is about a four hour route uh, without weather. <laughs> and that <laughs> covers from corner to corner. So they, they go from Ravenshoot and the Queensway all the way up to Fort, Fort Bolster, Eudora, and up to the uh, Lake Drive East uh, in the nor Northwest corner. So uh, it absolutely covers all the corners of Georgina um, and is, uh, <laughs> is a very, very long route. Yep. It is. Now we'll switch gears a little bit, sidewalks. That's also a concern. Um, for a number of residents, especially older residents and those who have school-aged children. What can you tell uh, residents about that process? So, so sidewalks, they do fall, uh, um, fall into the same call-out category. So when we, we do declare an event, a winter event and, and equipment's being deployed, the sidewalks are, are deployed at the same time. Uh, this year, we have moved over to a, uh, a contractor, a contracted services delivery for a portion of our, our sidewalks. Um, and, uh, and, and at this point, uh, uh, we've seen quite an increase in, in this level of service provided, and we, we anticipate to continue to follow up on our contractor and make sure that that you know roads and sidewalks are are cleared uh, harmoniously. Great, and I know occasionally damage can happen to lawns by the sidewalk snow plows, especially when the ground hasn't frozen. Can you tell us quickly because we're just about to uh, to wrap up? What what's the process? Can they call in to uh, to yeah. get that damage repaired in the spring? Yeah, please please call into customer service. We document it. It won't get done until the spring, but we document all uh, areas that that need to, um, yeah repair and, and we'll. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to cut you off there. I know, I noticed a quick, a quick break, but. But uh, come back and we'll talk about road uh, construction. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this is Service Georgina on Rogers TV Georgina. Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to discuss road construction. Now we have Rob Flindell, our Director of Operations and Infrastructure, and joining us is Nancy Fleming, Manager of Asset Management and Technical Services. So welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Now the condition of roads, and in particular um, their road, is something at the top of many residents' minds and concerns. And I often get questions from residents asking when their road's going to be rebuilt or repaired. Uh, Rob, I'll start with you. How many kilometers of roads does the town have? And, and tell us a little bit about the, the type of road surfaces that we have here in the town. Certainly. Uh, so in the town, we have uh, over 350 kilometers of, of roadway. Uh, the majority of that road is, is got an asphalt surface. Uh, we also have what we call a surface treated road that looks like asphalt, but it's actually uh, a thinner type of, of asphalt that's used on uh, roads that see less uh, traffic volume and less heavy trucks and so on. And we also have a smaller number of gravel roads, uh, particularly out in the, uh, the rural area. We have some in the, the Eudora and Pefferla area that are, are still gravel roads. So those are basically the, the three types of roads, uh, a fully asphalted road, a surface treated road and a gravel road. Right. And we've talked over the years and, and uh, I've, I've learned a lot from you and, and uh, about keeping the good roads good. And what do we mean by that? Sure, I'll, I'll take that question. And then uh, I think some of the other ones are, uh, Nancy will, will take over. Exactly, we'll get into the, we'll let Nancy yeah, do the deeper yeah. dive so, so into keeping, the... <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, keeping the good roads good means that, that you wanna uh, maintain the, the road uh, through its, its life. So the road slowly uh, deteriorates from the first time that it's uh, the asphalt or the surface treatment or the gravel has been placed. 
But if you don't maintain that road, if you don't put new uh, uh, asphalt on the road, if you don't crack seal the road, fill the potholes, it degrades very, very quickly. So you want to spend as much of your, your dollars and your funding on the maintenance of roads, keeping the, the roads good so that they don't deteriorate to the point that they have to be reconstructed, that everything has failed, the asphalt's broken, the, uh, the gravel base and the ground underneath has uh, deteriorated and gone to mush. So that's what we mean by keeping the good roads good. It means maintaining your, your asset. It's like your house, right? So yeah. you, you want to replace the shingles before they blow off. Uh, you know, that's, that's the idea. Right. Bef yeah. Before the big problems happen. And, and those um, sometimes small investments or, or large investments can, can lengthen the, the life of that, that road by, by many, many years. So it's, it's a good investment over, over time. So now we'll get into some of the, the deeper information. We'll let Nancy get into some of these. Um, how does the town monitor the condition of roads? Uh, so the town has um, entered the partnership with York Region to undertake a pavement condition assessment program for the collection and analysis of pavement condition survey data. This is to assist us in the assessment of the quantitative assessment of the overall condition of the town's road network, so that 350 kilometers of road network that we have. And it provides us information uh, for the development of our capital plan for roads resurfacing and our reconstruction projects uh, for our road network. So the, and, sorry, I was just going to say, so the, the pavement management system involves some specialized equipment. I mean, back in the day, the, the road superintendent would drive the roads and say, oh, we've got a lot of potholes here, or, you know, the side of the road is failing here, or I, I see some water damage or some, some uh, frost heaving, but it's a lot more technical now than it, than it used to be. So maybe explain what that partnership, what that, uh, that data, how we get that data. Uh, so we take a piece of road and we, we separate it into uh, road segments, and then we evaluate each part of that road segment. Um, and this is done every two years as part of this program. And we uh, assess certain attributes, um, such as, you know, the severity of pavement distresses, such as rutting, roughness, cracking, and patching, and the smooth drive of the road, if you may. Um, and these evaluations are done uh, using a survey van equipped with laser sensors and a GPS tracking unit and high definition cameras. And they take pictures and assess these uh, different attributes within each um, section or segment of the road. And then once this uh, assessment is undertaken, um, we, use, we use a very um, uh, detailed computer program um, that we put additional information on, on the age of the road, our capital budget uh, requirements to come out with a capital plan to triage what road needs to be rehabilitated and to what extent. So in the town of Georgina, we actually just finished our, this assessment this fall uh, for our roads. And this was an initial assessment that we've done. So we are just undertaking the processing of our data now to determine what our capital plan will look like for our roads rehabilitation um, work in the upcoming years. So we take that data and then my next question is then how do we decide which road gets repaired versus resurfacing and which roads need to be fully reconstructed? Uh, so the data that's collected is collected um, and uh, a number is um, determined called the pavement condition index rating. And it's this rating uh, that uses um, data from that cracking information out like alligator cracking, how smooth that road is when you're driving it. Um, surface distress, different surface distresses to determine what that pavement condition index number will be. And then once we determine that, we use traffic volume, um, age of the road and budget availability to provide a rehabilitation plan and timing. Um, so we have a number of buckets of money um, once we get our approval from council to determine uh, what we will do at each part of the road and when. So there are then different types of road construction in terms of uh, a road project. So maybe tell us a little bit about that because people will, they think if they see the trucks coming in, oh, my road's getting yet fully reconstructed, that, that may or may not happen. So what types of road constructions are there? So currently our roads program is broken into three different buckets of minor capital resurfacing, uh, which is uh, where we really take off the top layer of the road um, and resurface that. Uh, includes uh, also maintenance type of activities, a minor, minor resurfacing, which is like route sealing and microsurfacing, which is what Mike Voss and his roads team were doing this fall um, out in our community. Uh, then we have uh, the major resurfacing, which is um, 
a larger segment of road that we do um, take off the top layer of road. And then we have a construction reconstruction, which we take it right down to our sub base layer. Um, and this is what we're doing on Irving Drive currently. So right. this is like a two year program. So what do we do in the, the, the first year of, of it? Because if it's over two years, what, uh, why does it need to be over two years? Uh, so the larger road rehabilitation requires a design component, which includes a geotechnical investigation. And what we do there is we will um, do special boreholes with our geotechnical engineer to determine what type of soil characteristics and geology we have in the area to determine what type of road base we need to be um, designing to. In addition, during road construction, reconstruction, we also take into consideration other assets uh, within our um, town, such as um, assets that live underneath the road in areas where we have um, urbanized areas where we have uh, linear sewer main and water mains that maybe are coming to the end of their useful life as well. So we would want to package all those projects together to make sure that we are only digging once. Right. So you try to, to merge the two and, and, and like you say, not to redo a road and then a couple of years later, you know, dig it up to, uh, to correct something that maybe could have been done at the time of the, the road project. So do we know right now what roads are going to be resurfaced and, and, and worked on in, in 2022? Or do we, do we know a, a list yet? Uh, we are currently just waiting for the data that we have just, um, and that is being analyzed that was collected this fall. And then we'll be able to come up with a capital uh, roads program. Um, moving forward. We do um, currently have projects underway though in Eudora um, as well in, in their design phase as well as Irving uh, Drive is in its design phase as well for a complete reconstruction. So the reconstruction of Irving Drive will happen later this year in 2022. We did the, the design work and now we're and I know COVID really kind of threw a, a wrench into a, a lot of our, mm -hmm. our capital plans and, and with roads when things got shut down and you know now there's supply chain issues and and various components that you know you just didn't know what was going to happen. But so the design of Irving Drive will, is being completed this year, and and the road construction happening in 2022 as well. Uh, the design phase will take us pretty much right into um, the end of 2022, and then we hope to commence uh, construction in early 2023. Okay, I, I was at, thinking that it was going to happen in 2022. So we'll have to let the residents in, in that area know because I know they have questions. The same for, for down in Eudora. That's a huge project we're working on. So we're starting some of the design work there or the investigation work. Is that what's happening in, in Eudora? Yeah, we have survey work to do as well as geotechnical investigation followed by design work um, as our first step in that project, which is going to be happening in 2022. Okay. Now, Georgina isn't unique, and Rob may want to step in on, on some of this, the funding gap for our for assets. How are we working to, to close that gap? Yeah, certainly, uh, Mayor Quirk. So, uh, as every municipality knows, uh, you know, there's uh, the, the cost to, to do the work, and then there's a the cost of, of the future work. So, every year, our council sets aside uh, typically about an additional 1% of the, the tax rate that goes into our reserve. And that's for the, for the future work, you know, next year's work and the year after and year after. But in this year, next year and the year, year after that, my group, uh, mostly Nancy uh, and her staff are putting together what we call an asset management plan. So that asset management plan takes all that information that Nancy spoke about the current uh, inventory of roads, water mains, sewers, everything that we own, the condition of those uh, assets, and then uh, puts together a long-term plan for the rehabilitation and replacement of that work. When that work is done, basically, in the, over the next three years, we'll know much better than we know now how much money needs to be in the bank, essentially, for that uh, future work. Because right now, we're doing the work of today, but we need to plan for the work of tomorrow. And, and how much, um, I think we have a, some sort of dollar figures. What's our, what's our funding gap right now that we know of in, in, uh, in Georgina? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so we're at, just on the road side, we're at least $3 million underfunded on the, the work that, that we know could be done or should be done. Each uh, year. With, each year. Right. Uh, and you can imagine it's the same number on the water and wastewater side sidewalks, street lights, buildings, all of that needs to be funded. And that's why we need the, the long-term plan because obviously you're not gonna do all of that in one year, but if you start like an RSP or a TFSA, 
you put a little bit away every year yep. and when you need it in in the future you, you'll hope that you've got enough in the bank yeah and and even if we had you know the, a big pot of money dropped on our, our lap there's there's a certain amount of capacity that that we would have <clears throat> certainly as nancy has said we've got to design the roads before you design the roads, you've got to have all the data um, analyzed in terms of the condition of the road to be able to know what uh, treatment or what uh, reconstruction. So it's uh, it's not simply a matter of, of um, more money, it's, it's the right resources internally as well, correct? Correct, yeah, and, and as Nancy spoke to, uh, with the, the number of assets that are, are in a roadway now, water, sewer, street lights, water main, you have to uh, sequence all of that uh, work in its proper order so you might resurface a road three times before you replace the water main but you want to you know know when the water main needs to be replaced so that you don't you know duplicate your work and spend your your scarce resources yeah and it, it is a complicated process and and we know we need to uh, put more money to those those areas and that's why we're doing the uh, the the one uh, percent capital so great information from from both of you today thank you thank you so much that that's all the time we have uh, today Thanks for joining me. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this has been Service Georgina on Rogers TV Georgina. See you next time.